Hey everybody, welcome to Grindstone Church's online service for this weekend. We're so glad that you guys are here to join us. We can't wait to have you join us in song as we worship together with our leader, Christy Greenheis. This week, I want to read these beautiful verses from Psalm chapter 67, verses 1 to 5. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you.
Good morning, Grindstone Church family. It's so great to be here today with you guys. Uh, this is Pastor Brian, and we are on our last week of our series called Staying Positive. We have a great theme coming up today because today we're going to be talking about stopping the scarcity cycle. You know, this is something that's affected every single one of us over the last couple of months, over the last couple of weeks and days. If it hasn't in some way, this is something serious that actually stunts our growth, stunts our faith severely if we don't watch out for how it can affect us. So today we're going to be reading a story uh, from Matthew's Gospel, and we're going to be looking at how 
the scarcity cycle, how the scarcity mindset really harms us in our faith and what we can get help from in God's word uh, as we hear from Jesus for help here when we read it. So we're here in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped out from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. And then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and the two bread, looked up to heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples, who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. We see this amazing story from Matthew's Gospel. We also see this uh, the same story told again in Mark chapter 6. And in this story, we see this story that's very well known to many of us, where Jesus feeds 5,000 people. And in this story, we also see that scarcity mindset that is there in the minds of Jesus' disciples and followers. So here's the scene. Jesus is out on this wide open plain. They're out on this flat piece of land that's far away from any kind of remote destination where you might be able to buy some food. And in that time when people went to see a teacher, nobody showed up with food trucks. Nobody was a vendor who was swinging by with uh, popcorn, peanuts, and ice cold beer. There was nobody like that who was around to give anyone some food who was watching somebody teaching out in a remote spot. And if you went there, you'd kind of be there for a pretty long time uh, without food in a bit of a place that was far away and it was a bit of a trek in order for you to visit there. And so if this crowd became restless, which is one of the things that the crowd was worried about, that could be a pretty tough situation. Now, if you had a crowd of 500 people and they started to get restless, you'd be pretty concerned, right? Well, imagine having a crowd of 5,000 people. If they got restless, you'd be really concerned with the kind of situation that you could be in. So, here we have the scarcity mindset. And it kicks in here in verse 17 when they say, we only have five loaves and two fish. This is all we've got. And we read the story and we think, oh, you know, that's just the disciples. They're the only ones who think like this. But actually, I think the disciples are like a mirror because when I see them, I see me and, and I see all of us in the way that we have attitudes and reactions to, to different things all throughout the course of the year. You know, think about how we've We've all had a bit of a scarcity mindset this year. We've all had it in some way. We've all had it in some form. You know, we say there's, there's not enough love out there. We don't have enough love. There's too much resentment and too much anger. Uh, you know, we don't have enough supplies. We don't have all the stuff that we need from the stores. We've got to keep ordering stuff from online. We've got to keep packing our houses as full as is humanly possible. You know, we don't have enough peace. There's too much fear out there. We don't have enough time. There's... Too many things that I'm trying to juggle with all the things that I'm trying to do. There's too much with school, too much with kids, too much with stuff that I'm trying to juggle. There's just, we just don't have enough of, of what we really need in life. So here's a question for you. What have you been telling God lately that you only have? What are you telling God lately? This is all I've got. You can't really use it. Or what have you been telling God lately that this is just something that I'm not getting enough of from you? You know, interestingly, the, the disciples, 
uh, in their Jewish culture at that time, as, as, as all the boys did at that time in that culture, they would have been very familiar uh, with what we know as the Old Testament in our Bibles. And, and because they were really familiar with that, they all would have grown up with the story of Elijah, of, of the prophet, and this amazing story about how Elijah the prophet, at one point in time, he helped this, this widow, and she wasn't able to find food for herself, so what Elijah did was he came over to her house, and all she had was a little bit of flour and a little bit of olive oil, and he prayed for it, and he blessed it, and this amazing miracle happened in which she would go to use the flour and use the olive oil, and it never ran out. It's amazing. It never ran out. So here we are all these years later, hundreds of years later with Jesus, with this story that we see in Matthew, with this story that we see in Mark 6. And we see in the story in the Gospels, Jesus feeds 5,000 people. And his disciples are saying, we only have a couple of loaves. We only have a couple of fish. If you keep reading in your Bible to Mark chapter 8, we don't really know, I don't really know the timeline, but at one point in time, this event happens again, where Jesus instead is working with 4,000 people who he's been teaching in this crowd. And then what do his disciples do? They all stand around and they all say, oh my goodness, the crowd's hungry again. What are we going to do? <laughs> We, we're not told what Jesus' face looked like. We're not told that he face palmed. We're not told that his, his ears twitched or if he had a little vein throbbing in his forehead. But once again, his disciples are focusing on what they don't have. And it cripples their faith. They have the scarcity mindset. So what do we do about this? Well, there's two applications of things that we can do about this as people too. The first thing that we can do is don't diminish what you have. You know, we, I love it when uh, Jolene said this when she was sharing in one of our groups a few weeks ago. We talked about how we, we see ourselves with an attitude of, or a mindset of something that we need to fix and we bring it to God and we ask him for help and then we take this and we replace it instead with something good that God tells us to do or a good way which God asks us to walk and do. So for us, we need to replace an attitude of scarcity with an attitude of abundance instead. Don't diminish what you have. Scarcity fixes on what I lack. And instead, abundance reminds itself, what do I have? What is all the stuff that I have? In, the, in our passage today to support this, we have the Apostle Paul who's in prison, who reminds believers that just like him, they are always coming from a position of abundance, from a position of being given so much. He says this in Philippians 4.19, And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. From his prison cell, we are being reminded by someone that God takes care of us, that God supplies all of our needs out of his glorious riches. He's not giving this begrudgingly to us. He's giving this generously to us the way that a good dad does. He gives, he helps, he provides for every believer spiritually and physically with all their help and with all the needs that they have. Don't diminish what you have. The second thing that we can do is see that God's abundance often follows faith. You know, very often we, we, we come to God with the things that we need. We come to God with a complaint. We come to God with a concern. And we tend to say, God, I need you to do this for me. If you could just open up the bank, if you could just, just send me all the stuff that you have. Uh, I'm, I'm standing in here holding my hands out. If you could just start pouring... Just give me all the good stuff, that would be great. But God doesn't work like that a lot of the time. You know, very often, as Jesus did this in many other ways, um, 
But Jesus often waits to see what's going on with our faith first before he acts and responds in kind. He operated this way with miracles. Uh, he would often wait and see what came out of your mouth, see what he knew was going on in your heart before he decided to act in response in a way that was miraculous, in a way that was helping and healing and, 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 and helpful for people. Well, and Jesus taught this in, in the parable of the shrewd manager. Uh, he's talking about somebody who's wise and somebody who's able to handle what God gives to them. And he concludes by saying in Luke 16, 10, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large things. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibility. If you think about this year, it's, it's been a year of, of fear. It's been a year of hoarding. It's been a year of, of packing things into our house to store. And maybe that's one of the things, one of the reasons why we've been affected by this so much is because we've kind of gone the opposite direction that we're supposed to. If you're faithful with a little bit, God will give you more. And we aren't trusted with more until we've been faithful with that little bit that God has given us. So maybe instead of storing all the stuff that we have, we need to remember to be marked by generosity. And generosity is, is, is expressed in many different ways for us. We can be generous with our compassion by being generous in our time, by being generous in our hearts towards people who are having a really hard time, who are really struggling around us. Uh, we can be generous in our resources by giving when we see opportunities to give or by, by helping others, even just by lending things out that we might be able to have that can help someone in a short-term way or even in a long-term way. Uh, you know, maybe we need to remember to be generous in our finances. Uh, you know, there's many things that we can give that towards, that we can help towards, that we can tie them towards the church as well too. That's an opportunity for us to release these things that the, we were always meant to give away in the first place anyways. It's this way of life, this way of living generously that always comes as a response when we remember what God has done for us. We are always spurred into generosity when we rem remember how God has been generous to us. And I'll finish this just with Paul's words from 2 Corinthians because he connects these two thoughts just beautifully with abundance and generosity. He says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous in every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. God has given you everything that you need. And God's abundance is often unlocked with our own faith that we have in him. He has given us so, so much. He has given you so, so much. Let's remember who we are. Let's remember where we stand. Let's remember how much we've been given. And then instead respond out of gratitude uh, for the incredible grace that he's given to us. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you that we have been given so much. Lord, we've been, <laughs> we've been taking on the attitudes of everybody else around us instead of taking on the attitudes uh, that you want us to take on with a heart that's like yours. Lord, will you help us to, to reject the mindset of scarcity and instead to remember who's with us when we're in a difficult situation and instead remember who's given so much to us as well too. God, we give our lives to you. We recommit ourselves to you today to listen to you, to hear you, and most importantly, to be your hands and feet in this world that needs us to be listening and paying attention to you. We pray you would commit us to this work with new boldness, new courageousness, and new resolve. 
We ask this in Jesus' good and generous name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you again on Sunday. Hope you have a wonderful week being generous. We'll see you Sunday.